So, this is a pretty impressive turnout for a, uh, for a COVID funeral. On paper, this is about as many people as we can legally fit in a church in the first place. Um, you're all family, you're cross contaminated anyway, so, you know, that's, uh, there are ways of stretching that number, but still, for, for such a little country parish, this is, uh, this is very nice. Uh, what I've been saying ever since the pandemic started, um, as we gather for something like a funeral in church, uh, we do so for the sake of our deceased, for the sake of one another, um, but we also extend our prayers for those who would have been here other under circumstances. Um, it is a shame that there are some people that just can't join us for these sorts of things because they're they're more fragile with the health thing and all of that. So um, again, I'm very grateful that you're all here. Uh, let's pull together for the sake of one another and for those that would be here under other circumstances. In the waters of baptism, surely died with Christ and rose with them to new life. May she now share with them eternal glory. I invite the family to place the They're kind of interchangeable. So I'm going to sprinkle her casket with holy water as a reminder and symbol of her baptismal grace, which stays with us no matter what, even after death. And with that same symbolism in mind, I now invite the family to come forward to the fall of
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In general, uh, I like to look for patterns when there are some to be found. Because with sacred scripture, the text tends to come alive a little bit better when you bridge it with something else. And we have that today, mostly between the second reading and the gospel. 
and that bridge of ideas is giving yourself to God. We are blessed when we truly and completely give ourselves freely to God. And surely we can all agree that Shirley did exactly that. She was very strong in her faith that she certainly belonged to God. In the second reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy, he says that when we persevere in life and in faith, we shall live with Christ forever. So, no matter our screw-ups or our shallowness, Christ is the faithful one. He will never give up on us, even though we give up on him all the time. So, the blessed in life are the ones who persevere in faith. That is a great gift and a true accomplishment. And that brings us back to people like Shirley. It is absolutely something to honor and respect that she lived her whole life in the love of the Lord. That she can forever be a testament and example for those who come after her. If we persevere with Christ, no matter the junk that life throws at us, we will live with him and be truly and fully blessed. And that's, that's in addition to our basic faith that no matter what, Christ never gives up on us. I know that teaching can get a little muddled at time with all that talk of hellfire and stuff that you hear from uh, certain people. And while it's indeed true that keeping the faith is terribly important and worthwhile, it is every bit our faith that Christ does not abandon his people even when we abandon him. How exactly are those two beliefs reconciled? Well, that remains to be seen. That's the part that's in the hands of God. But no matter what, if we persevere in Christ, we shall live with him and be truly blessed. So I said at the beginning that such a message was linked to the gospel. So um, first of all, for whoever's decision it was, thank you for picking that gospel. Uh, it's actually pretty rare for a funeral family to choose one of the gospel readings that directly talks about Christ being crucified. Um, if you go to a funeral and it's one of those readings, it's probably the priest that chose that reading. But not today. So I appreciate that because it's fitting to reflect on such an important and momentous moment in Christ's life at this a funeral. So, anyway, do you remember Christ's words on the cross? Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. As the second reading was about being true to God in life, the gospel is about belonging to God in death. When we breathe our last, we Turn to our Creator. A Franciscan friar once said that death is a surrender. No matter how long we live, no matter what we do in life, we surrender ourselves to God at the end. Into His hands we commend our spirits. And that little rule even applied to Jesus. And I've always thought that that comparison between death and surrender is appropriate and helpful. And that's because an act of surrender is scary. It's a loss of personal freedom and autonomy when you surrender to someone or something. You have to give that up at least a little bit when you place yourself at the mercy of another. And you have no real choice but to trust them and hope that things work out with respect to what they do with you. How could something like that not be frightening and an anxious experience. As it is with surrender, so it is with death. You are not the one in control. Even if you were in control for most of your life. When your moment comes, you are at the mercy of God, even more so than usual. 
And this is where faith really shines through for us. Because when we spend our lives with God, welcome in our souls, that moment is significantly easier. When we trust in God during life, that surrender in death can be seen for what it really is. But surely, that entry into eternal life, well, you know what, it's still a surrender, like, a, like anyone else. But she had no real cause for fear because she knew that Christ Jesus is the firstborn of the dead and that he has prepared a place for her since long before she was born. Into his hands she commended her spirit. As Christ paved the way for all coming after him, we need only put our trust in his sacred promise. He is our high priest, after all, in addition to being the sacrifice that releases us from our sins. So Shirley had every reason to know that her soul was in good hands. So maybe, maybe, if you will, it wasn't even really a surrender. Maybe it was more of a presentation, a gifting of herself to him. Here I am, Lord, please take the reins and bring me home because it's time. To be fair, it is possible that none of that was in Shirley's mind <laughs> at the time. Uh, no one really knows that except her and God, after all. And the rest of us, we really just, we have no choice but make an educated guess as best as we can. But even so, we all know that she was a woman of great and deep faith. And therefore, we can assure ourselves that she had every advantage that one could ask for to face the end of her life with peace and total confidence in the mercy and goodness of God. So as we proceed in a few minutes to the altar of Christ for our sacrifice for her sake, let's do our best to share in that peace and confidence that claims as its origin nothing less than the perfect divine love that God has for each and every one of us. Please rise as able for our, uh, our general intercessions. As we raise our voices in prayer, may the Lord grant grace and peace to our sister. For surely who received the light of Christ in baptism, scatter the darkness now and lead her to everlasting light, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our sister who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray the Lord. Lord hear for all who share the Christian faith, that we may be strong in our faith for the resurrection of the dead, and may we remain diligent in prayer for those who have gone before us. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who mourn the loss of a loved one, that our sufferings may be eased by the hope of our new life to come, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again with all those who have gone before us into God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those absent today for any reason, that they may remain in spiritual communion with us today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those at Clearview, including the residents, and the staff. May their community remain supportive, healthy, and safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for the repose of the souls of all our beloved dead, be they family, friends, colleagues, or co-workers, may we always be united in faith, now and forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord 
Lord God, true source of love and all that's good, hear these the prayers of this family. Grant the soul of your departed servant to release from all her sins and grant her a blessed resurrection. We offer these prayers and those in the silence of our hearts through our Lord Jesus Christ. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever.
in a similar way when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Shirley, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and free from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're just about there. I have some final prayers to say, but before we move on to that, um, we have some brief words of remembrance that will be said. Um, I wasn't entirely clear who was going to say them, but whoever it is, they can come back. Thank you. And they're short, so we can say the same thing for this. My great grandmother asked that this be asked. My great grandmother asked that the volume be read. She said, love one another. Hold fast to that, whether you understand one another or not. And remember, nothing really matters except being kind to one another. In the name of Christ, and to all as far of the world as you can reach, hold fast. life, 
They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us take our sister to her final place of rest. Thanks be to God. Amen.